One of the things Kelly and I really enjoy doing is uh, taking walks with the kids every day. Uh, getting them out into both our community and both nature is super important to us. Good job. Whoa! Callan has no fear. And he'll climb into anything or onto anything or around anything. Um, he just loves exploring what's around him. What do you think? Um, Carter, who just turned one, is loving to follow his brother. Good job. Keep going. And they just love being brothers. We can't keep them inside. <laughs> my name is Kellyanne, and my son battled RSV. Living at altitude in Colorado, that was one of the challenges Carter faced from the beginning. He was on oxygen as he transitioned to living in Colorado. And um, they were both in the NICU about four to six weeks. Carter was born three pounds, 15 ounces, and Callan was born four pounds, four ounces. So the weight is very relevant in their age to um, some of the statistics around RSV. Carter went to daycare Halloween of 2022. We can't forget it because they did a big Halloween parade and he was three months of age. He had been cleared by um, his NICU team to resume daycare and his weight had normalized. So we um, didn't really have fears around sending him. And the next day, November 1st, we got a daycare alert that he had been exposed to RSV. What we thought was just another daycare cold after Callan being in daycare for almost a year at this point, we knew like daycare colds happened and we were used to that. And, and Carter, this cold was different and never really got better. Over the next two to three weeks, his ability to breathe on his own became far more challenging. Respiratory sensitive virus is otherwise known as RSV. It's a major cause of disease in young infants. RSV causes a common cold in most children, but in, um, by the age of two years, most children have been infected. In young children, less than six months of age, it causes a disease called bronchiolitis. And the problem with RSV is that it causes very thick mucus, quite simply put. The mucus then blocks these small airways in the lung. We do know that RSV can lead to pneumonia later on. And there are some studies which show that a baby that gets RSV, just like influenza, can be hospitalized later on with pneumonia because the respiratory tract is inflamed and the epithelium is damaged. The lung lining is damaged. So it's not surprising that they get pneumonia. It is the single most important cause of hospitalization in babies outside of the neonatal period. Most of the disease occurs in the first six months of life. Babies less than three months are particularly vulnerable because they go to the ICU. Their bronchioles are very narrow, and you can imagine that they get compromised very quickly and they need ventilatory support. We had taken him to three providers within three days, and basically due to the volume of patients in the emergency rooms, they were not recommending kids went to the emergency room. They gave us some warning signs to look for if he wasn't going to the bathroom enough that we should take him to the hospital or start to work harder to breathe. We could see him tugging from his neck to work hard to breathe. So Kent and I decided to bring them to the emergency room. It was a long night of just holding him on my chest and making sure that um, he didn't fall off. And then we ended up staying at the hospital for a week um, and got discharged on Thanksgiving Day. RSV is very common. It occurs mostly in the winter months, much like influenza and other viruses. We know that it's spread uh, by many methods, by droplets. It stays on surfaces for about six hours. There are two different mechanisms of spread. Young babies, as you can imagine, stay at home. But if they go to daycare, they get it from other children in daycare. And that's a very common method of spread of RSV to babies. The second mechanism is by young children going to preschool or to school, 
bring back what is to them just a cold, but it's very contagious. And that spreads to the baby and gives the baby RSV. So RSV causes a lot of mucus. Remember that it blocks the lungs. So the mucus has very high volumes of virus, and that is easily transmittable by babies. We don't transmit virus very much, but it's the small babies that transmit it to the older adults. So in fact, grandparents often get it from their grandchildren. So after Carter was discharged end of November, he never was able to restore his normal lung function. Every little cold we'd get at daycare, he just seemed to um, battle. And then he was exposed again to RSV. And from there, we had a similar situation occur where he just couldn't keep up with um, the amount of breathing he needed to do. And he became very weak and tired and was admitted again. And this time he was admitted in the PICU, which is the ICU for, for pediatrics. For a while, it was pretty scary because um, you go back to the NICU and you think of how many weeks, how many days are we gonna be in here? So it's still pretty um, overwhelming to see such a little guy with so many tubes hooked up to him. I think that's why this hospital stay was a little bit more intense, is he had all the lung scarring from the first RSV exposure, and then now with the second RSV exposure, it was a lot for his little lungs to overcome without the medical help. He still has some lingering effects that we think may be caused from his RSV. Ready? Uh, he was diagnosed with asthma after his second stay in the hospital. Um, so he continues to take a, a flow vent daily and he has his rescue inhaler that we have to have with him at daycare or when we go places in case he were to have some sort of asthma attack. RSV is, is a little different from most other viruses. It occurs very rapidly. In small babies, they get a cold. The cold produces thick mucus and the cough is a very characteristic cough and that cough is because they have thick mucus. And so you can imagine that as the airways get blocked, the babies struggle to breathe, so the chest goes in every time they take a breath. So two of the three of the main signs for parents to recognize are a runny nose that produces thick mucus. Wait. Chest in drawing, where the chest wall gets chosen, in, and babies can't feed well. I think the easiest thing is to see a pediatrician or a family practice doctor as soon as you recognize any of these symptoms. We do know that it causes long-term chronic disease. RSV has not been well recognized and it's not been at the forefront of parents' minds because there really was no prevention or treatment for it for a long time, as opposed to influenza, for which we've had vaccines for a long time. So advocacy groups are really needed so that parents can understand the burden of disease and that it affects our children everyone. There are two aspects to, to the treatment of RSV. The first is, uh, can we treat the symptoms of RSV? Now, when babies are at home, keeping the airway clear is very important. The second is to provide oxygen. So if the baby is not breathing well and is not feeding well, bring the baby to the hospital, we provide oxygen, we monitor the oximetry, and if the baby needs ventilatory support, we give it. So those are really the only two things that really work in small babies for treatment. We can prevent RSV and its sequelae by giving either the antibody after birth or maternal immunization. Come, look, we're gonna smell the flowers. Do you wanna smell the flowers? Yeah. yeah. The second time Carter got RSV, my mother-in-law got RSV as well, and she was sick for almost three weeks. So it can affect both the, the young and the old. Up you go. Good job. Oh. 
Carter is back to normal with breathing. I think the first year of his life, he has always had some type of breathing concern. Some of it could be related to his prematurity. Um, and I think a lot of it's related to that early exposure to respiratory disease. Um, but then the Carter we know today um, has far less medications. What's the pig say? Oink, oink. To this day, he seems other than his glasses to be a pretty happy and healthy kid. And when we're planning vacations, we're able to go to the mountains, which is not something we had been able to do when he um, was so sick. I'm very hopeful for Carter's future. He just continues to grow and, and learn from his brother and, and be a little boy.